The Rangeley Lakes region in the mountains of Western Maine, a remote recreational playground. Wintertime, a buzz with snow enthusiasts. But when Saddleback, the local ski mountain, closed a few years ago, it was a gut punch to the local economy. We had this almost a panic, okay? You know, now what do we do? We have all these people out of work. Five long years passed, businesses closed, people moved away, but a stubborn few refused to give up hope. And I would tell people, that, as long as I'm there, there's a chance it's gonna open. The next few years would be filled with twists and turns, false starts and sudden stops. Woo. But the downward slide has stopped. The lifts are running again at Saddleback, and the town of Rangeley finds itself in the middle of a good old fashioned comeback story. This is Chronicle on WCBB Channel 5. Rangeley, Maine, a town of about 1,200, the commercial pulse point for the broader Rangeley Lakes region. The town has the raw feel of a frontier outpost just a few miles from the Quebec border and perched up high on what is sometimes referred to as the west coast of Maine. It gets in your blood. It's got an energy in Rangeley. In the warmer seasons, Rangeley is renowned for its boating, hiking, wildlife, and world-famous fly fishing. I'm gonna let her go. And come winter, there's no hibernating around here. <laughs> the area's chief economic engine and largest employer has always been Saddleback Mountain an independent ski area in an industry dominated by conglomerates. Saddleback may be Maine's third largest ski area, but the devotion of its fans stands second to none. Grew up skiing Sunday River Sugarloaf primarily and came here for the first time last year and fell in love. If you come to Saddleback and you don't enjoy it, you need to find a really good psychiatrist because something's not right. The vibe is laid back, lift lines non-existent, big mountain skiing with a small town friendly feel. Good morning. Ready to roll? And if Saddleback has a head cheerleader and chief bottle washer, it's Jim Quimby. I always tell people when you cut someone around here, they bleed Saddleback blood. <laughs> Quimby grew up raising hell on Saddleback as a kid. My mother always said that Saddleback was our babysitter because in the wintertime, uh, if we weren't in school, we were always here. Today, he's general manager, and he insists that the only way to truly understand the Saddleback experience is to buckle up and take some turns. This mountain was really, it was designed by skiers. The fall lines on the mountain are just absolutely gorgeous. Last year we got almost as much snow as Park City, Utah. By any <laughs> measure, uh, you know, this, this is a snow magnet of a mountain. A magnet that attracted the attention of investor Jonathan Tower. His firm, Arcteris, is a social impact investment fund. We focus on helping underserved communities revitalize, communities that have lost their major employer, their major industry. Arcteris typically invests in struggling urban neighborhoods, but what they found in Rangeley after Saddleback closed had a grim familiarity. I don't know that I've ever had sadder moments in my life uh, than those five years. Operations manager Jared Emerson helped Jim Quimby keep Saddleback from going to seed during the five years it was shuttered, in hopes that someday a savior might appear. All the while, friends were leaving town looking for work. Every week, someone that you'd worked with for years would leave. And we had these going away parties. And I didn't ski for the five years we were closed. And, and I waited. I'm too prideful to go somewhere else. And this is my place. And there's a lot of people like me around here. <laughs> And we'll have more on Saddleback's comeback story a bit later in the show. In the meantime, it certainly hasn't hurt Saddleback's recovery that it was voted Maine's favorite ski mountain in 2023 by the readers of Down East Magazine. Up next, snowmobiles to the rescue. <laughs> 